Hi, Melissa. I'm so happy that you're Hi. here at Co-Creator Circle. I'd love to know uh, a little bit about your class. What is it that you're offering on Tuesdays? Okay, so Tuesdays through Co-Creator Circle, I'm offering a variety of um, discussions and experiential courses on how to raise our energy, how to work with our energy, how to relate to ourselves and to other people. The classes will be revolving and evolving. And uh, I look forward to working with you, Manishki, and offering, uh, like I said, a variety of classes on your platform on Tuesdays. While we chitter chatted. So I wanted to ask you, okay, uh, Melissa, have you decided what you're going to be presenting in January? Okay, well, due to world events and uh, interesting things happening uh, in everybody's life and around the world, uh, in January, I'm going to be focusing on stress relief and having experiential classes for people to uh, help them find balance on a variety of stress-causing situations. So I would like to offer uh, EFT tapping, if anyone's familiar with that, or just regular tapping is actually how I'll be referring to it. Um, for stress, for relationship issues, for uh, political situations that seem to be causing people a whole lot of stress. And that will be uh, non-denominational uh, political situations. Uh, we'll keep it as neutral as possible, but my intention is to give people the tools to heal and to get them through these stressful times uh, as much as possible to share that with people. And so I'll be offering classes for everyone to participate, where I'll be choosing and picking um, the, the topics that we're tapping on and instruct people how to do this for themselves and to work with us in the class. And then also I'll have smaller classes, we'll just be a couple of people, so we can work on specific issues of the people who choose to show up. Say maybe like five or six people that we can work on the individual issues that they want to bring to the class. And, uh, and we'll see if people are interested in that sort of thing or if they prefer the group tap along um, where we can uh, communicate and tap into issues that might be of interest to the entire group. Yeah, that's interesting that you can uh, you can make these classes either for individual or for groups. So do you find uh, something special when groups tap to, uh, along together? Uh, yes, well, especially when the people are, uh, you know, anytime you get two or more people together, you create an energy that is a little greater than what we can create on our own. And so the group tapping is very dynamic, uh, just on a different energy level. And also when people participate, say through the chats or something like that, we can um, visit new topics and, and get perspective on what other people are thinking and feeling and doing. And also uh, to not feel like we're the only people that are having these uh, fears or stresses or anxieties or pains or aches or whatever. Um, it, it's nice to know that other people are having some of the same issues that we're having or interested in, in balance themselves and finding tools to balance themselves on issues that many people are having because a lot of people feel like they're the only ones who feel this way and there's a world full of people that, uh, that can be having the same exact situation. So the feeling of community and knowing that there's other people out there who are feeling the same way you know, psychologically and energetically, that can be, um, um, you know, it can make people feel like they belong or they, they are in community with other people to some degree. And that's very nice. And uh, it's, it's good for people to know, you know, especially with all this uh, separation that's been going on this year. Yeah, that's true. I remember that I had attended one of your group sessions and whether it was uh, something that I brought up or somebody else, it just seemed as if all of us were uh, experiencing it together. And sometimes if it was oh. not ourselves individually, we could think of someone in our family. And uh, so can you tap if somebody who's not there, uh, uh, but somebody says uh, a, a family member, for example, is going through an issue. Can you tap for that? 
Well, uh, you can tap for the family member. You could, there's something called surrogate tapping, where if the person is with you, you can tap for them. But you can also, uh, people do use it to tap on issues for the other person. Now, on some level, the other person would have to be open to that. Um, but also, it's not going to be really a bad thing because all of us have experienced or, or tapped into a range of emotion in this life. And we don't always consciously realize it. So sometimes in a group tapping where there's only just a couple of people, when the people are picking different topics to tap on and we all tap together, you feel the release. And, and some people think, well, wow, I didn't even know that that was a hot topic for me. I didn't know that that was a stress for me, but I felt the release. So it must've been something I was holding on to. So I like the small groups where people bring their issues to the class so we can share and each work on these ones um, in a way kind of holding space for each other and supporting each other and because everybody's had to some degree some of these issues like anger pain betrayal um, being sad being upset being disturbed by um, outside forces or inside forces you know our relaxed action to what's going on in our own lives and um, and it's just uh, it, it really for me, it, I feel the warmth. I feel the warmth in the group. I feel the the people having compassion for each other, you know, because they're like, oh yeah, that's happened to me. Or, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that happened to you, you know, because there's always a range. For some people, a small betrayal might feel like, um, you know, the worst thing in the world, but if someone else had like a really big, huge thing happen to them and that feels like the worst thing in the world. But there's not really any judgment because we can all, um, like I said, tune in and be compassionate to each other because we've all had uh, a lot of these experience to to a lesser or greater degree. And so I, what I find is a lot of people are like, wow, I just felt a, a shift in myself to tapping on her issue, you know? So it's kind of like a group healing that way, but also in a group where there's like, you know, it's not gonna be like an individual bringing their issues to the table. Uh, in the group, I tell people that they can substitute the words that I'm saying for words that come to their own mind that um, might be specific to their own situation. And people, you know, talk in the chat and uh, and uh, sometimes I'll pick up something there, you know, and just throw it in the mix. And like I said, generally, most people leave feeling very relaxed or at least a shift in how they were feeling when they first got on the call or how they've been feeling. I get really nice feedback from people and uh, you know, it's not all the time, but when it is, it's 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 really nice because then I feel like, okay, I'm, you know, doing what I can to help humanity and help people to move a little forward in their lives and give them the tools to help them survive in the shifts and changes that life brings. You know, Melissa, you said something very interesting and I wanted to pick up on that. And that is that sometimes a person um, tells you what they are feeling and so you can pick up on that. But I'm thinking that sometimes people are sh either shy or fearful or embarrassed uh, to tell their things, even in a small group. They are there, so they definitely want to be helped, uh, but they don't want to uh, let, you, you know, they don't want to sort of let the others know. So uh, how right. can that be handled in these sessions? Uh, yes. Yeah, so what I do sometimes like uh, in, for those situations in, um, in a physical group setting is I'll ask the people if, if they're comfortable to talk about it out loud or if they'd like to write it down. So uh, what sometimes happens is I have them write it down on the same pieces of paper and then we put it like in a hat basically uh, if a hat's available and pull it out and I go according to what they wrote so that nobody knows whose issue is what. And if they feel like they want to talk about it, they can, but if not, they don't have to. And in a, in a group Zoom meeting or a video meeting, they can privately message me or uh, ahead of time, if they want to email me their situation that they wish to work on, um, then, uh, you know, because uh, they can have personal sessions. However, in a group session, like I said, we, we're we're working on each other's things all together and when you have a group of people there's just a different dynamic energetically and also compassionately because we can see other people are you know struggling more or less or for the same things that we are and um and they don't have to show their picture 
they don't have to show their picture. You know, sometimes I do these things. I feel like I'm talking to myself the whole time. And at the end, they pop on and say, thank you very much. That was awesome. <laughs> um, but uh, I want people to feel comfortable because I haven't always felt comfortable, you know, for myself talking publicly or uh, showing up on videos and things like that. I'm still working with that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I want people to be comfortable and still let them feel, you know, uh, that they're they're getting uh, their issues addressed and um, that they're, um, you know, part of the group. And so, whether people see their faces or not, uh, doesn't really matter. I mean, it's nice. We're used to not people seeing people's faces this year, but I want people to feel comfortable, and that's really the main goal because I'm helping people to. I want to help want to help people to feel more comfortable in their own skin, in their own homes, in their own planet, you know? You know, I remember the uh, one of the first sessions of yours that I had attended on Zoom, and I had told you that I'm feeling very disappointed at certain things, and I oh, yes. felt as if you were uh, you could uh, intuit, you know, you could see and feel exactly what I was saying. I didn't even have to explain myself so much. And first I said, she's saying many things. She's saying it many times because we did the tapping, I think five or six rounds. And then I realized, wow, she's going deeper and deeper and deeper into <laughs> it. So that was, and for me, that one experience was enough you know, and very oh, often I would find myself thinking about that. If, if, if I ever reached that level of disappointment, I would think of, of what we did in the tapping and it helped me. But I'm thinking oh, sometimes a person, <laughs> yeah, I want to thank you for that. But I want to, uh, sometimes people may come for these sessions and one session may not be enough for them. They may want to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to talk to you privately so do you offer right. private sessions also? Uh, yes, I offer private sessions. And like I said, small group and large group. Um, now say we're doing a large group. It, it's, it's an introductory for some people to try something that they may not be familiar with and also to teach them something that they can use for themselves. And then so with the, and that's with the larger group. Like, you know, I'll pick the topics generally uh, unless this, you know, people are adding to the conversation somehow. And uh, so I'll go with general topics that I know that will probably touch a nerve or touch something for everybody. And then um, on the smaller, uh, the smaller group ones, um, and also, you know, on the, on the large group ones, it's gonna be the most cost effective for people to, you know, get a taste of what it would be like to be in such a class. So what is this new technology, which is not really new, but, um, you know, they get a, a chance to, just discover it on a different level. And then if they want to do individual and then they get to do in a smaller group, again, you know, it's still gonna be a little less expensive than having their own session. And also, like I said, the added benefits of feeling like they're not alone on the planet having the situation. Um, and then of course I offer private sessions generally over the phone or on video uh, for people who want to do specific work to their situations or go a little deeper. Uh, sometimes something gets uh, triggered that they realize that they want to have like a little bit more personal things or stuff they didn't really want to say in, in the group. Um, there's always more work we can do. Literally um, with the type of stuff that I would be, that I'm talking about now with the tapping. And there are many tools that I like to use and incorporate into a personal session that I probably wouldn't do in a, in a group or a larger group, um, just not to confuse everybody, but in a personal session when we're really just trying to get uh, specific work done and shift to the person. And I'll use a, a whole bunch of tools that um, I don't always use in, in the larger group. So those are the different uh, variations and reasons why people would choose, you know, the large, medium, or small uh, situation according to what they want to work on. If they want to, you know, do uh, strictly like focused work on just them, or if they're interested in seeing what else the, the people are reacting to or, or experiencing on the planet. You know, there's a variety of reasons of what people would feel drawn to. And I just want to offer almost like something for everybody, you know, <laughs> because I have that ability with this modality. I'm so happy at what uh, this little conversation has done because I feel just, you know, we get to know you a little better. Uh, feel uh, that, you know, you have such a beautiful energy of 
compassion but above that the joy you know the light the, the light <laughs> of this uh, very often we think of compassion and 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 pain and trouble you feel so heavy but 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 when i look at you there's just light and i think that's oh, how you help, you not so only much. with your words but also with your presence Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. That means a lot, and thank you for recognizing that. I mean, most of my life was not that way, um, and I have a whole story of you know my climb up the ladder. And but there was at some point, and it was fairly recent. At some point, I went from trying to be happy to having happy be my default emotion. And uh, you know, it, it, with this change in energy on the planet, I really feel like there's a new. energy on the planet and everything's going to be wonderful but even at the height of feeling that i felt something that was the total opposite of that and so you know it's very interesting and always uh mm another bad thing a good thing when i get to use my own tools on myself so you know it keeps it real as they say and uh i do find that i do i work with the tools that i teach for other people or, or offer to other people i work with these often for myself but you know i have up days and i have bad days but the up days far outweigh the down days and that's not how you know things started out in this life and um and uh i just feel like there's so many reasons to be happy and be joyful and uh people don't allow each other they feel like if i'm happy someone's going to take advantage of me if i'm happy someone's going to screw me or think bad things about me or stuff like that and i think really what contributes to you know me being who i am at this point is that uh i don't i can't say i don't have any ego because everybody does but i don't uh, i don't do fault to you know what will people care about me as much as i used to you know because i, I don't really depend on these people for my survival like you know sometimes we feel like it you know like oh my friends aren't going to like me or people aren't going to like that i say that or i do that you know and so there's a lot of reasons in society and cultures why we don't choose happiness as our default um and uh i i really feel like i've been through the gamut and you know people ask me why am i so happy and i said because i choose to be you know my life is the same as anyone else i have ups and downs and disappointments and betrayals and problems and everything but i'm happy because i choose to be because i realize that we can make choices and people don't know that and so one thing i like to say about the work that i do is i like to help people to line up with what they say they want they want to be happy they want to be relaxed they want to uh, i started out working with people for pain relief emotional and physical pain relief you know i'm not a doctor um but for uh like the lower level situations i am um happy to teach people things that they can shift on or help help them to shift um but these are all things that i use all the time for myself and Uh thank you for for saying those beautiful things. I really appreciate it and I I'm I'm happy that uh that you can see me that way. And I think some people think I'm nuts cuz I'm happy all the time. Um and they might not take me seriously, but I don't feel responsible for how they feel. I I like the idea that other people's opinion of me is not my uh none of my business, <laughs> you know. And uh you know, so that's where I'm at pretty much. yeah that's enjoying true, this because, life experience yeah it's not only about because we have to see that it's not only about uh, starting and ending with compassion or starting and ending with removing a pain but what happens when we work on the troubles of our life and that's what you are you are not only teaching it you're actually uh, embodying it and and you're sharing and showing it oh yeah oh yeah you know it's like a uh, being happy or being sad or being this or that uh whatever society or somebody thinks you should be does not necessarily make you immune to uh life situations but i feel like raising our energy up helps us to have a different experience of it as opposed to the level down here and i've ha- i've been on all the levels and uh and this is the level i'm choosing now especially in this day and age where there's so much shifting and confusion and misinformation and you know some negative emotions floating around and uh and if we can choose 
why not choose something that feels better as much as possible, you know, as much as possible. And I really, like I said, I've been through the gamut and, uh, and I'm choosing ha to be happy regardless of what's going on, regardless of what someone thinks of me, you know, when I'm trying to, you know, not make people uncomfortable or anything like that, but especially I feel very lighthearted and joyful in my situation and when I'm doing the classes or when I'm doing the personal sessions, some people are very serious and very regimented and stuff like that. I work with my intuition a lot, which is like you said, when I'm someone's uh, wanting to work on something, I'll kind of feel what's going on with them. And so I can kind of direct the session according to what I'm feeling uh, from them energetically. Um, so, uh, you know, some people call it instinct, some people call it intuition. I think we all have these things. I just might use it more than a lot of people use it and um, might not use it as much as other people use it. But I, I always feel like very joyful and I feel my energy rise up when someone is uh, communicating with me and we're trying to work on um, shifting them. You know, I'm not like a stoic well, we're, we're kind of person. I just, uh, I just naturally feel this like uh, spirit just well up inside me that wants to be. Uh, I tend to be a little bit on the playful side. I can be serious, uh, of course, um, but uh, yeah, that's what usually comes out in the class or in the personal sessions. Is I'm always like very elated to be able to be of service. I think that is the beauty of today's world also that we can see both the, like you said, the confusion and the, and the pain, but we're also seeing so much of light, light, you know, oh my gosh. the, the, oh, the yes. true feeling of the light heart, which yes, is, so which is playful and, and joyful and sprightly, you know. And that's why we, we, we can help anyone who, who needs helping. So I had, yeah. I had a thought when you were talking, do we ever tap for literally, if, can, does someone just say, I am happy, do I still tap? You can, of course, yes, because um, you can tell, you know, people say, oh, why are we always gonna focus on the negative? Well, it depends on the person, you know, if the person is already tuned into something from a negative direction, then you wanna work with what's most active for them, you know, and, but you can tap equally as well on the, on the good things, on the happy things too, because, you know, we have a whole lot of little subconscious blocks that um, says, you know, like I just mentioned, like maybe we're not supposed to be happy or people look at us bad if we're happy all the time or they take us seriously or something like that. You know, I, I tend to be a little over the top as far as being um, happy and joyful a lot. I don't know why that is, but it just is. And, uh, you know, it's not easy for everybody to, um, to, to sometimes be next to someone who's like that, you know, especially when they're feeling a lot of pain and frustration. And if I'm not, they're like, well, What's wrong with you that you're not feeling the same as everybody else? Well, I don't know. That's a whole other thing. But, but uh, yeah, you know, I just like to, I like to share, you know, when you're in close proximity to other people or even communicating with them, they can feel your energy. And the energy that I would prefer to give off is to be, uh, you know, lighthearted, excitement. I have a lot of wonderment for this life. And, uh, and that just is naturally coming through me at th this time in my life. And I'm happy to share that with others. And if it's not for somebody, then I'm not disturbed when they make a decision not to, uh, you know, see me for some reason. I don't take it personally. You have this very beautiful um, uh, site on uh, Meetup. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, uh, yes. For busy so people. when I... <laughs> So my, uh, so my meetup group is Wellness for Busy People, and that is because it took me about 20 years to go through a lot of shifts um, in my life, physical pain, emotional pain, mental, uh, all kinds of things, all kinds of things. I really, like I said, I, I, I've done the gamut, I feel. And, um, and so I like to help people to feel better faster. And so my website and my meetup group is wellness for busy people because who has time to be sick? Who has time to feel bad? Who has time to be, you know, disturbed or worried about work or what about this or that? You know, I, I first got started because a friend of mine, she was a wonderful psychic, but she was running to the doctors 
with every little thing wrong with her. You could hardly get a chance to see her. She was always at the doctor's and you have to plan three weeks and I can't cancel. I had this for three months, this appointment. I'm like, you're sick now. Why are you going to wait three months to see a doctor? So I said, I'm going to find something that's faster and easier and you don't have to run to the doctor every single time. So, uh, so this is, I wasn't interested in health and wellness. I was fortunate to be uh, quite healthy at the time. And, uh, and this is how I got into it because she was telling me how long she had to wait for a doctor's appointments. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how do people work with this? I want to find something to help people faster. And so wellnessforbusypeople.com, wellness for busy people on Meetup in Miami. And, uh, and so this is uh, helping people to feel better faster later so they don't have to take 20 years to find the tools that I found. You know, I'd like to share this information. I think it's good for people, good for humanity. Um, and, uh, and I think we need it right now. So this is what I'm doing full time now. Thank you so much, uh, Melissa. This has been such fun talking to you. Uh, always so uh, enjoy, always very enjoyable <laughs> and, <laughs> and illuminating in many, oh. at many different levels. Oh, well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you and uh, you are totally here. <laughs> oh yes thank you for co-creating and you're an illuminator as well and we always have a, a special time together and uh, i appreciate your work that you do and things that you've taught me and continue to teach me <laughs> the world is a beautiful place and if yeah. we can help people to focus on those things but I, I do find like you said there's a lot of light in the world lately. I am so impressed and so happy and joyful. And this is probably one of the reasons because I meet so many other people that are like little islands, like people who want to help humanity and people who are doing nice things for themselves or others because compassion starts with ourself. If we don't have compassion for ourselves, how do we know to have it for anybody else or for humanity? You know, we have to start with ourselves. Otherwise it's like trying to give someone a donut from an empty box of donuts, you know? <laughs> if you don't have it to give, if you don't yeah. know what it is, you can share it. So, yeah. um, but I'm, I am constantly meeting people who are happy people, who are helping people, who care about other people. And it's not, you know, we're all at different stages. It's not a judgment. It's just like, wow, wasn't it great to meet that person? And wasn't that nice? Or, hey, isn't that sweet? Or that was just, we see people being nice to each other. And it's almost like watching someone play a video game, but we're getting the bonus points, you know? <laughs> So when people are able to be compassionate to each other, it's like they're playing the video game and they're getting bonus points. And so um, I like to, I would like to offer the series that we were uh, doing on compassion in Co-Creator Circle. I would like to offer that series at least once a month, especially while we're going through all these changes and upheavals um, in life. So we were doing the three-part series, uh, us talking about compassion for ourselves. And then the second one is compassion for others, other beings, um, you know, people and animals that are not ourselves and then compassion for humanity. And what does that look like? What does that feel like? What is the benefit? Like, why would we even do that? Like, why, why do we care about that at all? You know? And so there's a lot of information that I would love to share with people who want to come and enjoy these sessions and just find out, um, you know, what it is and why it's benefit to themselves and to humanity, because I find that there's so many people that care these days. And maybe because my energy is different, I run into these people a lot more. And I would like to help people to uh, have similar beautiful experiences if they're open to that. Yeah, I think that's so important because uh, we've been having this compassion series this month. And yes. I realized two things. One, that uh, we attract the people that we can help. And two, that we attract the people around us who have a similar vibration to us. And that right. also is compassion, you know, to have compassion means to feel together. So together yeah, we kindness. start to feel that, uh, that, that beauty and that gives you, us the strength to help, help the ones who are not yet feeling that. Yeah, you know, I really think that compassion is a superpower. And, uh, and, you know, so maybe I'll change the name of some of the classes to reflect that, you know, to make it more interesting if people aren't showing up for however we named them in the first place. But I, it's really a superpower. And it's really, you know, when you leave this planet, you can't take with you the physical things. But I believe in life after life, according to my own situation and, and near death experiences. And, um, and I really think that these are tools that we can learn here. I mean, we have a plenty of opportunity. 
and uh, and take with us from this life to the next life to the next life. You know, I think this life is another experience for the soul, one of many perhaps. And I think you really have to be brave to come to this planet. And, you know, we teach each other. Every interaction is, is uh, you know, we're learning something how to be or how not to be or what we like or what we don't like. Like there's always something we're learning out of it. And uh, we're here to teach each other. I like to say if we were meant to do everything ourselves, we would have been born on our own planet. Um, but because we're on the planet with so many other people, we have all this interesting interaction. And wouldn't it be nice, you know, people been on the bottom long enough, wouldn't they like to do like try some other levels? And I hope I can offer that opportunity. I love that. Thank you so much. This has been great fun talking to thank you, you, Melissa. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Namaste. 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 <laughs>